some of us, managing pain is a major part of each day. It's there when we start the day and there when we go to sleep. For my knee pain I have, I've seen different doctors had different tests, but there's no, uh, no apparent problem other than overuse, probably. Is around-the-clock medicating the only way to function? And if not, what's the alternative? Welcome, I'm Portland Helmick. So you're getting out of bed one morning and all of a sudden you feel a spasm in your back or your neck and you think to yourself, I must have slept funny, it'll go away, right? But sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes, if you're like my first guest, Holly Moulton, it's enough to send you on a quest for healing. Thanks for being here, Holly. Thank you, it's a pleasure. So you just slept funny one night, you thought. Yeah, I was cat sitting and I was in a different bed and propped a pillow up and was leaning on my left and um, when I woke up the next morning I had pain in this area and um, I thought it would go away. But and it persisted? Days, weeks, couple months, yep, it persisted so I thought oh, I better do something about this. And you, you, how was it affecting your quality of life or was it? You were able to function. Yes, I was able to function, um, but um, I wasn't able to do my exercising anymore. My um, push-ups, um, sit-ups, um, weightlifting, I couldn't do that anymore. Um, I couldn't carry a backpack, even a light backpack, I couldn't even do that. And it was also affecting your mood a little bit too. I was in chronic pain. I was in pain 24-7 and um, it just makes you rather... Um, miserable sometimes, a, a, a lot of times, and just you get short with people. Um, you were short with people at work yeah. sometimes? Yeah, sometimes I work in a surgical intensive care unit, and, and uh, yeah, sometimes I'd just be a little bit short um, with, at work with friends, family. Yeah. Right. So you started looking into ways to help yourself, and you went to a chiropractor? Right. I went to um, a couple different chiropractors over a few years, and um, it was kind of a more traditional um, chiropractor. The kind of they did the bone tracking yep, adjustments. Yep. And I, it, it helped for um, a day or two at the most. I was going several times a, a week. Um, and um, that but then just, the pain would just come back? Yeah, the pain was still there. It just it didn't really help. It just it, temporary. And you also tried massage? I tried deep massage, which did help, um, probably like about 35%, um, uh, but it still wasn't enough. I was still going to the chiropractor, and, and um, it was enough to get me by, but I, I still had a, a lot of pain. Did you ever take any medication? No, I don't like taking medication. So and that just wasn't an option for you? No, I didn't want to just treat the symptom. I wanted to find out what it was and, and get rid of that. And no pain. one really could tell you what it was? Nobody, yeah. So you went to an orthopedic surgeon? Yes, and I you had x-rays done. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, I had the x-rays done. He said they were fine. Um, so he said he thought it He was, didn't see anything? Nope. Said the spine was fine. Um, he thought it might be inflammation, so he gave me uh, anti-inflammatory. And But um, you don't like taking medication? Yeah, I don't. Like <laughs> so he gave me a sample. I took it home, and I read the... Um, the side effects and one of the side effects was death and um, I just thought no that's not for me <laughs> that's not for me no. No, no so you just said no I'm not gonna take so this. I know yeah that was so bad. you needed to find another way yes yes and you have and when we come back we're gonna find out about the connection Holly made between her physical discomfort and her emotional stress Welcome back. We've been talking with Holly about her chronic pain. So Holly, you have found something that's really made a difference for you. Uh, yep. Network spinal analysis. Network spinal analysis. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about it in just a minute. It's a method used by chiropractors. But what has it really done for you? Um, twofold. Um, my pain is uh, with the shoulder is gone. Um, so I'm able to do my exercising now, um, my push-up sit-ups. Um, I'm even doing some boxing now. Um, uh, which I could never have done before. And um, the other benefit that I, I got, which I wasn't going for, was the emotional benefit. Which what do you mean is, by that? Well, um, I just, um, 
I'm, I'm much less stressed now. Um, I'm not as tense. I'm more calm now in my life. Um, my relationship with my boyfriend is so much better now. And you attribute um, that to this type of care? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. We're actually with someone now who knows a whole lot about this. Donald Epstein, the founder of Network Spinal Analysis. Thanks for being here, Donald. It's my pleasure. So as I just said when I was talking to Holly, this is a method used by chiropractors. You developed it in the 1980s, and it's quite different from what most people think of when they imagine chiropractic care. What's unique about your work? Well, a few things. The first thing is that it's a system that involves the person understanding about the nature of the body, how they move their energy. It's and their a breath. wellness system. It's a package of wellness system. And the care that the, that the care progresses, where two particular waves happen in people's care. Yeah, you actually make these very sort of light contacts along the spine. And in response to those contacts, people start to make these waves yes, on the table. One is a wave of breath, which just suspends all the noise inside. A respiratory wave. A respiratory wave. And the second type of wave, we call a network wa wave or somatopsychic wave, a more technical term, and that helps the body to reorganize. It takes the areas of tension and helps you use that as fuel to create internal change. So people actually on the table begin to undulate in these waves and they start to unwind the tension themselves? Is that the idea? It, first, you start to unwind the tension on your own. After that, you learn to temporarily build the tension up to be able to make a breakthrough by changing the structures of your spine, making your own spinal releases and corrections on your own, and being able to move on to making healthier choices in life. So as uh, network practitioners, when they're tapping or touching or making these light contacts along the spine, they're not actually contacting the places where the tension is. The intent is not to relieve the pain, it's to make a contact where the pain is not, where the tension is not. That's a real major uh, you're contacting the, the places of ease. That's, right. That's an actual major ch uh, change in the road from going into the area, going on the path of where is the pain or tension. Let's correct it to restore a person to where they were before as compared to how can we develop new strategies for how the body deals with itself, moves its energy, and actually creates its own alignment. The gentle touches that we're applying are in this area is called spinal gateways. A spinal gateway. Yes. So you're sending a message to the brain when you touch that area of ease. Exactly. And what's the message? The message is, have you looked at yourself? Have you seen how you put your hip on for the past five years? Can you see how you're re relating to stress or adapting to stress? Can you see how you're locked in a position that would only make you angry or only make you frustrated? Instead, as the spine can assume its more natural position on its own, find its own natural center, so to speak, a person not only moves the energy more effectively, they experience a wider range of emotion, and from that they make different choices which compound upon having uh, feeling better and being well. Rather than trying to restore someone to where they were before, we say let's raise the standard. Let's raise the bar. Let's instead try to produce a new ability to be present in your body and to be able to heal at a level not before available. And you were kind of skeptical, Holly, when you first started this work. You went for a few months and you didn't originally or right away notice anything major. No, nothing different than what had been going on. Until previous. one day. Um, woke up in a very bad mood, um, was doing my laundry, and um, picked up the laundry basket like this and heard click, click, click. In your shoulder? In my shoulder, in my shoulder area. So I put it down and I just couldn't believe the relief of pain that I had. And I thought to myself, well, this is what Kim was talking about. This, this is your network practitioner. Yes, Kim, yes. And I just thought, this is what she was talking about with self-correction. I just self-corrected and like, I felt 80% better than I had. And I thought, this is it. You know, to an outsider, Donnie, it doesn't seem that these light contacts along the spine could do very much of anything, dissipate physical pain or make an emotional change in someone. How do you explain it? Well, the way I explain it is looking at life, you can have a really stressful day one day, lots of things going on. Your mind is focused on all the crisis, all the stress, and how am I going to get through this? Now, when someone touches you, just in particular places, maybe your neck, your shoulder, or someplace else, and suddenly the noise starts disappearing. If they touch a place where you're relaxed. Relaxed, or they touch an erogenous zone, or just a whole different other process. Well, I look at these as like helogenous zones along the spine. Here is when you touch 
the body stops the noise and is able to start making changes. You see, if we're not trying to realign the vertebra, if we're not going to area tension, we're not going into a tampa tantrum in that part of the body and try to say, stop that, which makes it tighten up more, but instead we say, well, at that same level where the vertebra and the spinal col column attach, is there a place where we put a gentle touch to that spine that allows the brain to be cued to look at itself and say, I gotta make a change and give it more resources okay. for the next time. And also one thing I want to bring in here is that your work has a reputation for spurring emotional release in people. People spontaneously sometimes will start to laugh or cry on the table. What is the connection between emotion and the spinal cord? That's, that's a great question. I see the, I worked on the, spinal, <laughs> <laughs> I see the spinal cord it's actually as the end point of emotion, so to speak. The beginning and end point. So what happens is before you get angry, your neck must do this and your spine must tighten. The energy actually starts building up in the center. Your breath reduces. If you feel totally like you can't deal with anything, you feel overwhelmed and burdened, your spine is in this position. In a more ecstatic state, it moves this way. As the spine moves through a greater range of its motion naturally, because it can, it doesn't have the restrictions of having to defend yourself. What winds up happening with motion comes, comes emotion. emotion. That's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, we're actually going to be finding out a little bit more about your work in just a minute. Stay with us. When we come back, we're going to show you a network spinal analysis session in action. Welcome back. I'm here with Dr. Donald Epstein, the founder of Network Spinal Analysis, and Holly Moulton, who we were talking to earlier, and Dr. Kim Leslie. This is a network practitioner. And Donna, you're going to show us an abbreviated session. And we've actually got two people here because in a network spinal analysis session, people get worked on at the same time. Yes. And the idea there is that we find the results actually are more effective. Why is that? Well, do you know if one person yawns, another person yawns? Yes. If two women are living in the same houses, the cycles start to become synchronized? Right. Living systems, and we must realize we are living systems, one person actually helps the other person to heal by remembering certain inherent rhythms. So as she releases, the idea is it can actually affect the other person. Without the person even seeing it. Okay, let's see. Okay, well, naturally the person would have already had a full examination, full understanding of what's happening. What you're going to see is when we apply a force to the body, when we apply it, actually what changes occur. Okay. Now, this is what a lot of chiropractors do, what you're doing That's right, right now. That's right. And this leg check is determining what area of the spine might be involved. Okay. Turn your head to the right and to the left, back to the middle. Okay. So, when palpating or feeling the spine, this area here has some tension centrally. When I apply pressure here. You feel here, that? Yes. Actually, put your hand here. You can feel it. Okay. It, it doesn't have so much give here. Okay. Okay. In this area, there may be a little bit more give down here. That's true. The muscles over here are a little bit more tight than here. This suggests that the spine is protective here. The body is acting as if it's trying to protect itself from injury. So it tries to slow life down to match its view of the world. So this, you're going to yeah. actually try and contact not the place where the tension is, but the place where the ease is? That's right. The spinal gateway at both ends where, is where the spinal cord attaches in the vertebral column. And like a marionette puppet, you pull this fiber here, it affects this. What I'm looking to have is the, these systems that coordinate the spine and make it healthy and function, they can function instantly. Okay, let's see Instantly it. respond. So we're going to go over here. I'm going to hold a gentle contact right here. And the first thing we're going to see is a little bit at a time. This starts moving on its own slightly. It looked like what you did was absolutely nothing. It, it's, it's the little something that makes a big difference. In and life, so is this, yes. is this what's called the wave? That's right. This is actually the beginning of what's called a somatocyte wave or a network wave, just the beginning of it, with some breath moving up the body. So she's beginning to, this is the idea, she's beginning to sort of unwind, whoa, unwind the tension herself? That's right. And if you were to measure the electrical signals going up the spine, you see the spine is developing a new strategy, a new organization, a new possibility for how to reorganize. Holly, do you feel like you're making yourself move that way? No. No, it's just happening. And how does it feel when it happens? It just feels like I'm, I want to stretch. It just feels like you want to stretch. Yeah. Okay. Now, as I modify this force, gentle touch here, we're going to get a little bit more of a response. You're going to see it here. So you know what's going to happen? The, every touch is 
predetermined to produce a particular consequence in the spine. What's going to happen is this area that we saw just under tension before that was locked, the body is moving tension from here up into this area, and now she's going to move in ways that are going to free this area. She's learned to adjust. So she's herself. doing that herself. She's That's making exactly. that happen herself. That's exactly Rather than it. you're going in there and trying to force a change. That's right. And the, the, it's, it's a totally different mindset. I know this looks weird. It looks really you weird. You know that it looks weird. It looks it weird. Does. That's right. But if you want to have an, it looks extraordinary, but okay. if you want to have an extraordinary change in your life, something's got to be extraordinary the way it shows up. Okay. And this is it. Now, this gets really fun here. I'm going to affect the neck vertebra here, here, and I'm going to. Gonna lift this and again, that's what, ooh. right here. Watch, and she's gonna. Does that hurt, does that hurt, Holly? No, I don't no. Know. Now as we it watch, it looks here, like it hurts. Yeah, as we watch this here, this spinal gateway, this opening is happening here between the brain and the body, and it's gonna start reorganizing. Watch as she does in this area in a moment. Watch as she does right there. She's realigning the vertebrae. Now understand. She looks a little bit like. Right. She's holding in a position. Like she's position. in pain, but she's not in pain. No. Not in pain, Holly. No, not at all. <laughs> exact opposite. Okay, we got to move you on to Dr. Kim. Okay. Now we work with Kim a little bit more advanced work here. Because and people are at different levels of care. That's right. And is that right. that looks like pretty, a pretty advanced level of care to me? This is actually pretty much a beginning, a, uh, early beginning care. Are you kidding? Yeah, because the movement is is more is more large in one area as compared to individual segments. As care progresses, you'll see the body move actually into the vertebra. It's quite exquisite. Okay. Let's look here. We're going to go to affect this area, the first vertebra. Now understand, the spinal cord goes through the through the middle of the vertebra, so it affects every nerve in the health of every part of your body. I'm move gentle. So all you're doing is it looks like you're just touching right around I your am, ankles. I am, and watch watch how the moves energy. And watch her upper neck move to this side, and watch it move to there. And she's actually exposing these spinal gateways there and setting into motion. Yeah. Like an adjustment would be. You might see someone as if a chiropractor is doing an adjustment. She's creating. She's on her adjusting own. herself. That's, That's what I'm right. hearing you say. Now this area here is where the body holds so much of its stress and its fight or flight from all the stuff that's happened in life. And most chiropractors adjust this area. Yeah. A very gentle touch here is going to help the brain to take this energy and move it through, squeezing out the tension and, and redirecting it up here. So can I ask you how you feel, Kim? <laughs> <laughs> you feel so too good? <laughs> get in here if I can, excuse me. And that's just the So what is that table. for? What's that what, for? What this is doing right now, it's helping maintain the body in this position. So the chest rises up and she can make the change here. Now watch. As I approach her from this area, the spine actually moves towards my finger because these spinal gateways move energy. They move energy so from one area to other. Energy. Okay. Well, the body's moving energy. I'm actually look. No, well, it doesn't look it. I'm actually helping her body create a spinal adjustment in the upper neck, as you're seeing here. But we're using the energy that was within her body to create the change. If you can look at the camera over here for a moment, this spontaneous happening as Holly now is working on real, not only realigning her upper back, but that position is one of ease and of joy and of grace. And she's feeling that in her body, and she'll make decisions from that place too. Let me get back here if we can. This is remarkable. So now, to be able for the brain to find that requires a whole new level of organization. So if I go like this and just watch here, that force is going to go down the spine. If I move this, it's going to go up the spine. So if a person's in a car accident, they have a fall, they have emotional trauma, rather than getting lodged, it moves through the whole body. The body's able to dissipate tension and stress and in a way. And this is why some way. people laugh on the table or cry on the table. Because or... with motion comes emotion, and it's life. If someone is becoming more alive, I'd like them to look like they're alive, not like a corpse. Uh -huh. okay? <laughs> to stay this way. You'll say, well, this person, why are they doing that? Every movement yeah. can be lo localized to what corrections be made. Okay, very good. When we come back, we're going to see how Holly and Kim are feeling after the session. Welcome back. We're talking about network spinal analysis, and I want to ask the two of you, you know, it looks really odd, I just have to say that, but you're f you look like you're enjoying it. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel physically and emotionally? Physically, I'm feeling great. I feel alive and in my body. Um, emotionally, I just feel like possibilities. Anything is possible in my life. And Which is why you keep going for care. I keep going yes. to care because of all the transformations that take place in my life and I'm 
makes me happier. And Kim, you? I feel amazing. I just feel like so full of life and just ready to just do what I need to do in the world. And my body feels amazing and really present. So it seems like physical flexibility equals some kind of emotional flexibility. And the reason for emotional flexibility is to do what they need to do in life to create the change they need to create. I want to thank you so much for being here. And thank you, too. To learn more about Network Spinal Analysis, you can read Dr. Epstein's books, The 12 Stages of Healing, and Healing Myths, Healing Magic. And you can also visit our website. Thanks for joining us on What's the Alternative? I hope you learned something new.